three, two, one. Okay, I'm going to show you in this video how to use Excel to assess the normality of a data set, basically to determine whether or not it follows approximately a normal distribution. Now the formula I'm going to be using to do the calculations here is the one that our book uses, which is uh, the index formula that uh, that is showing right here. Okay. Um, there are a number of different index formulas that can be used. Uh, they all have their benefits. Uh, the one that our book chooses to use is this one. Uh, the the rank minus three eighths divided by n minus one fourth. So that's the one we're going to be using uh, to do our calculations. Okay. So what we need is Excel, of course, and a data set. So I just have a, a list of numbers here of no particular uh, uh, no particular um, uh, context, but uh, they are, or we'll see whether or not they turn out to be uh, approximately normally distributed. All right, so I'm going to label everything as I go here. So that's my data. The next thing I have to do is calculate the rank. Now the rank can be done in several different ways. Um, you could order the data from smallest to largest and then count first, second, third, fourth, fifth, like that. Excel has a function, so I'm going to show you the function. And this way, if you have a large data set, you don't have to do this by hand. So the, uh, the command is actually rank. So we're going to go equals rank, R-A-N-K, and I'm actually going to pull it out of the menu here so I get the parentheses. Now notice what we get here in the little pop-up is we need a number, our reference, and the order we want to rank in. All right. So the number is the number in the data set that I want to rank, which in this case is the first one, 82, and then a comma. The reference is the basically the data list. Okay, so the reference is going to be an array, and so you're going to just highlight that whole array. You'll see it shows up there. Now the order is optional. Uh, if you leave it blank, it will order it from largest to smallest. If you want it ordered from smallest to largest, you put a one there. All right, and that's what I want. All right, so. What that is telling me now is that 82 is the 18th element of that data set out of 20. There are 20 here. All right, now I want to be able to drag this formula or copy this formula so I don't have to retype it every time. But in order to do that, I have to fix my array so that it doesn't move. I believe I've done this in other videos, but in case you haven't seen those other videos, uh, you do that with a dollar sign in front of the row and column. So column A, whoop, try that again, dollar sign, okay, yeah, that's a dollar sign, it's hard to see, <laughs> um, in front of the column, and a dollar sign in front of the row, and then for the last element, same thing, dollar sign in front of the column, dollar sign in front of the row, and notice that didn't change the rank, but what that does is it basically says as I drag this down or as I copy this down, the array stays fixed where it is. It won't drag the array down as well. All right, so you can either copy and paste or you can just drag this down to the bottom here and notice what I get. I didn't have to order my data set, but the function knows that 1 is the smallest value, 94 is the highest value, and all the others are ranked accordingly in between. All right. So the next thing we have to do is calculate the index. I-N-D-E-X. OK, I can spell. All right. So we calculate the index using the formula on the, uh, that I had up on the screen before. All right, so that is again equals to get a formula in here. Now I'm going to type this formula by hand. So I need a parenthesis. I need to take my rank right there minus three eighths. So I'm going to say three divided by eight, 
and then I need to divide that by n, which I could, if I wanted to, use a count statement to count the number of data elements that I have, in which case I would have to point to that. Or because I know I have 20 data elements, I'm just going to say 20 plus uh, 1 fourth. And what I'm going to get when I do that calculation is a number between 0 and 1. Okay, now uh, the number between 0 and 1 is going to represent the area under the normal curve for the rank. All right, that's the an approximation of that. All right, now this I don't have to fix anything here, so I'm just going to drag this down. All right, and what I get from this is uh, the numbers off the table, basically, uh, from the, the center of the table that represent the areas under the normal curve. Now those areas are specific to the rank, not the, not the data element itself, but to the rank. And the idea here is what we want to show, or we want to try to show, if this data set here is normally distributed, then when I calculate the z-scores over here, and I look at a correlation between the original data and the z-score, there should be a linear correlation if the data is normally distributed. All right, so I'm going to come over here now and do z-score. And once again, Excel has a function for this, so I don't have to look anything up on my tables. All right, so equals. The function is norm inverse. So I've used it a few times already, so norm inverse. All right, now what do I need to do here? I need to do a probability. All right, so this is the probability. The mean and the standard deviation. Now, because I'm looking for z-scores, I'm looking on the standard normal curve. So the mean is 0 and the standard deviation is 1. So I want my area, which is that cell, comma mean, which is 0, comma standard deviation, which is 1. Now, if I hit Enter, I get a z-score corresponding to uh, 0.8703 uh, for a for an area and again I can just drag this down or copy it down and now I have a column of z-scores alright so I have my data which I don't know if it's normally distributed or not and I have my z-scores which I know are normally distributed because they're z-scores um, based off a normal distribution that I got from my index. Uh, so I can do two things. In fact, I should do two things. One thing that I want to do is to calculate the correlation coefficient. All right, so if you haven't watched the video on how to do that, you might want to do that. And I'll show you again right now. The function is C-O-R-R-E-L. So again, it's right here. And we just have to tell it what columns I want to do the correlation, right? Array 1 and Array 2. So I want to do a correlation between my data, so I'm going to highlight my data, hit a comma between them. Now in order to highlight a second column here, actually do I need to do that? No I don't, it's a whole second column, never mind. Okay, alright, so between those two columns, and notice what I end up with. I end up with a 97.8 correlation between the two. All right, that's pretty high. So that right there is telling me that my data is approximately normally distributed. Now I can confirm that by doing a graph. All right, if I do a, um, a scatter plot, I should see a pretty straight line linear correlation. All right, so I want to do a scatter plot between my data and now if I want to highlight this second column separately, I have to hold down, now again, depending on whether you're on a Mac or a PC. All right, if you're on a Mac, you're going to hold down Control and Shift and highlight the column. If you're on a Mac, you're going to hold down Command, Shift, and then hot. Uh, why didn't that work? Okay, hang on a second. Because I think I probably have that backwards. No, I probably wasn't holding it down straight. Hang on. Command, Shift, 
Oh, for crying out loud, I know what it is. Okay, it's just command. Hold down command, and then you can highlight that whole second column. There we go. Alright, uh, now remember, this is a little different on the PC. Uh, you'll have to find your uh, your charts icon on the uh, on the menu on the bar here. Okay, if you're on a Mac, it's up here in charts. Click on scatter, scatter plot. All right, and notice the scatter plot is pretty well linear right there. All right, so combination of the high correlation. 97%, 98%, and the fact that the data looks linear uh, is going to lead me to conclude that my data set is in fact approximately normally distributed. All right. Now if you're going to opt to do the third uh, project in the, uh, the project list for the course, then you're going to have to do this as part of your analysis because part of that is going to require that you show that your data is normally distributed or approximately normally distributed. Okay, that's it.